AR glasses, VR headsets, the metaverse. What is all this and why do I care? Well, I'm not here to answer that, but what I am here to show you is the Enreal Air AR glasses. Let's take a quick but comprehensive look at these, starting off as always with the good, then the bad. We'll then give a verdict before moving on to a little discussion, just to shake things up a bit. The good here is damn good. Don't let the specs fool you. They all say 1920 by 1080p, which you might think is mediocre, especially when rendered an inch or so away from your eyes. But that really isn't the whole story. While I can't truly capture how nice the image actually looks, I'll offer a comparison to similar, but different hardware. If you've ever used a VR headset like the Quest or the Quest 2, this looks unquestionably better. I've owned both of those devices and it's clear that even though the Quest 2 has higher resolution per eye and the Quest 1 has an OLED, screen, neither of those images, in my opinion, look better than this, either due to poor contrast levels or the screen door effect. Now I've seen some reviews say you get 130 inches or a 200 inch screen in front of you with the glasses, and I can't really say that was my experience, but I don't have anything of that display size to compare. When I used them with my Steam Deck, the screen looked to be about 100 inches or so, which is nothing to complain about. Let me be clear though, these are not for VR, but I'll explain a little bit more about that later. Another good thing going for the glasses is ease of use. I mentioned just now that I use them with my Steam Deck, and that's my primary use case. You just plug them in and the deck screen turns off while pushing the entire image to the glasses. It's glorious. Alternatively, you can plug them into your phone or a device that supports USB-C out, but there are limitations as shown in the compatibility list here. If you're using an iPhone, you'll also need an adapter, but here's the neat part. If you have a laptop which supports video out over USB-C, I'm not 100% sure if this is Thunderbolt related, but I'm pretty sure it is. It just works. Joke aside, it really does though like plugging in another monitor. Some more good points about these glasses are the weight, portability, looks, and that you don't need to charge them. Yes, some might consider that a negative point, but I don't personally think so. For looks, the glasses themselves are pretty discreet. They don't look way over the top, unlike a competitor, the Rokit Airs. For the portability, they include a travel case, which can fit the glasses, USB-C cable, blackout cover, and a microfiber cloth. The blackout covers can be used if you feel like you really aren't getting enough brightness or just want to remove the AR aspect of it. I've used them outdoors and in a fully lit area on a sunny day, and while the picture can look a bit dim, it's still bright enough to block out your hand almost entirely if you hold your hand out in front of you about a foot away. They also include different nose bridge pieces and a spacer if you wear glasses, so hopefully something fits you. Okay, let's move on to the bad, and really besides price, I don't really have any other complaints. Yes, the Nebula app could be better, and I wish it worked better with Samsung DeX. The app itself is pretty limited. There is an AR space which allows you to watch videos and browse at the same time, and I'm listing it as bad here, but really it's not that bad. And even though I'm saying it's bad, it's software, so it can be improved down the line. It would also be nice if we could see the image outside of just the central part of the glasses. What I mean is, it seems like the limited field of view means that you can only see the picture in the middle of the glasses. I assume that has something to do with the projection technology, so maybe in a future generation we will see a wider field of view. When using the glasses with my deck specifically, there was also this weird behavior where the FPS values looked like they were half of what they should be, meaning that if I cap the FPS to 40 in the in-game overlay, it would show up as 20 or even 30. It definitely didn't feel like 20 or 30 FPS though, so maybe it has something to do with the way that the image is rendered in both lenses. Truthfully though, these are pretty minor issues and I'm definitely nitpicking here. So let's move right on to the verdict. Just buy these already. No, seriously, if you're a Steam Deck owner, these are amazing and you need to buy them. Okay, but for real this time, the price is $380 and that's pretty steep. I bought mine with my own money, so Enreal didn't sponsor this video. Honestly, I love these. And if the price comes down to say $250 or $300, I can definitely see mass adoption from the public. Imagine just jogging with them or walking around with them at work or even wearing them while driving your car. Okay, maybe not that last one, that'll probably cause some accidents. You get the idea though. They're just too convenient for what you can do with them and what they offer. These might seem like very specific use cases, but just like how my Steam Deck has changed the way I game, these have definitely changed the way I consume media. So if you're looking to get these specifically for gaming, let's address that now with a little discussion.
One of the Steam Deck's biggest weaknesses compared to other ultra mobile PCs or portable PCs is having only one USB-C port. So in this case, with the Unreal Airs, you're looking at a few hours of gameplay before you absolutely have to plug in and charge your Steam Deck. This is also the case with something like a Switch, which only has one USB-C as well. I don't have a Switch on hand, but when I did plug it into the single USB-C, it didn't work. I assume it's because you need to use an adapter like the one that Unreal sells officially. But that one did show them connected to the dock so I'm not exactly sure how that works. Some of the other premium handhelds have two USB-C's so you can theoretically play indefinitely as your device is being charged and the Unreals are drawing power from the device. And here's where the magic comes in. This adapter, though hard to find, will allow you to connect the glasses to a hub or dock and then have your hub powered via adapter. So that means you can play your Steam Deck and use the Unreal Airs to your heart's content without worrying about having to recharge it. You can even use it with a battery. You're also able to use an adapter to connect to your desktop GPU so that you can use it like another monitor to mirror or extend your desktop. This is assuming you have an NVIDIA GPU, which doesn't have it USB-C. Is it a niche case? Absolutely, but I mean, you can do it. Keep in mind though that this is not going to allow you to play PC VR games. As these glasses do not have any hand tracking, there's no way for you to connect controllers and then use them for PC VR. At least not to my knowledge. Doesn't mean it can't be implemented in a future generation though. So wrapping up, this isn't a VR headset. What it is, is a way for you to consume media and play games in a different way. Yes, there are bugs. Yes, it is pricey. But if you want to be on the bleeding edge of technology and don't mind these issues, these glasses are absolutely and real. See what I did there? No? Okay, come back for more games, gadgets, and gear with GG.